and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. We are going to talk about the musical Bagatelle. Now, um, we've talked about other musical forums on this channel before, like the Waltz and the Sonata and things like that. So I wanted to talk about the Bagatelle today, because in the next video, we're going to be talking about like a really famous Bagatelle, which we may or may not be mentioning today. Sorry, I had something stuck in my throat now. It's like I've been crying. I'm not, I promise, I'm not all worked up. In this video, we're going to be talking about what a Bagatelle is. We're going to look at a few key compositions that are Bagatelles that you can listen to. And I've actually created a Spotify playlist um, full of Bagatelles. So if you want to really like immerse yourself in the genre, you can check out the link for that. And on the blog, I also have some videos of the pieces we've talked about. I will be sharing with you audio for two of the bagatelles that we're going to be, I think two that we're going to be talking about today as well. But again, if you want like more depth, uh, then definitely check out those resources. So let's get started. Let's start with the definition of a musical bagatelle. It literally means a short, unpretentious instrumental composition or a trifle in French and German. Here are some of the characteristics. Bagatelles are usually for the piano, although we'll listen to some exceptions. They're usually short, light, and mellow, and they have almost an improvisational flavor. An interesting thing about the bagatelle that differentiates it from other more formal forms is that there isn't any like inherent structure. So for example, the waltz is often in binary form, A, B form, but the bagatelle can and does go wherever the composer desires it to go. There's no like set formula. Bagatelles date back to the Baroque era, where the term was first coined by Francois Couperin in 1717. It was named after a type of tabletop billiards. However, the composer who wrote the most famous bagatelles that we listen to even now is Ludwig van Beethoven. He, he wrote three sets of bagatelles, including a couple extras, such as the very, very famous one. We'll get to that too. Other composers who wrote bagatelles include Liszt, Dvorak, Diabelli, um, through the Romantic era, and then guys like Bartok did bagatelles in the 20th century as well. And they're even composed to this day by people such as Howard Ferguson and Julian Bream. As mentioned already, we are going to take a look at some of these famous bagatelles, talk about them a bit, listen to a couple audio examples, and then at the end, we'll share with you the Spotify playlist. So let's get to that. The most famous bagatelle that we're going to be looking at today is Fear Elise by Beethoven. Now, I don't want to talk about it too much today because Spoiler alert, we're going to be talking about that a little bit more in the next video, but we can talk about a couple things. So first things first, it's in rondo form. And we recently did a video on rondo form if you want to check that out. But the gist is you have this main theme, kind of like a chorus interspersed with episodes, which are kind of like verses. And we're going to take a little bit of a listen to it. We're going to listen to the super famous part that you already know. But if you've never listened to the full version of Fear Elise, I highly encourage you to do so because there's like the, the verses, the episodes, are really cool and yeah not everyone knows what they sound like so let's take a listen lists bagatelles and they're called bagatelles without tonality they're they're almost atonal and very very forward thinking he wrote them towards the end of his life in 1885 and at the end of his life list was getting really weird with his compositions and this bagatelle is a really great example of lists very wild uh, forward writing style, lots of chromaticism. And again, with the atonalism, that basically just means when you're listening to it, you don't feel like you have the grip of a key. So a lot of the times we talk about like this piece is in the key of C. And then every time you hear a C, you're like, ah, this is relaxing. But atonality, you don't have like any footing. You don't have any ah. <laughs> This was also program music, and this was a common thing that Liszt did. Now, program music is where there was a like a text and a little bit of a story to go along with the music, so that's kind of cool too. I don't have an audio to share with you, like most of the, the pieces we talk about in this video, but again, it's gonna be on the Spotify playlist and over on the blog. On the complete opposite side of Liszt's bagatelles are Dvorak's bagatelles. Opus 47, there, it, it's a light, fluffy set of five bagatelles. They're very playful, composed in 1878, so very similar 
similar timeline wise, but yeah, just completely different in character. These Vagatelles, most were written for solo piano in general, but these Vagatelles were written for harmonium, two violins, and a cello. And it's actually considered to be one of the most popular chamber works of all time. Anton Weber wrote a set of six Vagatelles for string quartet, Opus 9, between 1910 and 1913. These are more in the vein of Liszt as opposed to Dvorak, so they're very weird and described as exquisitely unsettling. Bartok famously wrote a set of 14 Bagatelles in 1908. And you can definitely hear Debussy. We're not gonna talk about Debussy today. We've talked about him before on the channel, but you can hear his influence in, in these Bartok Bagatelles. They made the Italian composer Ferruccio Busoni exclaim, at last, something truly new. And that is all for today's video on Bagatelles. As I mentioned, you can check in the description bar for the Spotify playlist and the pieces we talked about are linked over on the blog as well. I actually had a ton of fun making this playlist and it's something I'm thinking about, like maybe I'll do in the future with future videos. So let me know if you enjoyed this format and we can do more of those in the future. Catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. The first and most famous Bagatelle that we're going to be looking at today is... Da -da -da. Wait, why? I'm drumming and doing horn sound. <laughs>